Hello YouTube, welcome to this video, part 4 of my life story. Thank you to everyone who's been watching this series. There's 9 parts in all. The previous parts are in the description. Also the German language versions of this video. I hope you find my life interesting. And this part deals with my first gay experience and my first girlfriend. I was 18 years old. A virgin, gay or straight. I was slim, not bad looking, and I'll tell you more what's happened. Chapter 6. I have sex. The first time. In September 1985, and I'm reading from a script, as you can see. The script is in German, and I'm translating it as I go along. In September 1985, Lucy returned to Hockwell School and my relationship with my adoptive parents was very strained. We had nothing in common and they suggested going on a long weekend to a place called Lantony in South Wales. It's around about 40 miles north from Cardiff. We stayed at a place called the Half Moon Hotel in the village of less than 200 people and the nearest town was 10 miles away or 15 kilometres. Google down there, Lantony Hotel, a ho Half Moon Hotel there and this is the setting of the most unlikely weekend of my life. I thought it'd be a fucking boring weekend myself I was stuck with Shirley and Peter in a village in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by mountains. Little did I realise that fucking would become a reality. Most people would go to a big town to have gay sex. I went to a little village to have my first experience. We arrived on the Wednesday, and the following days, I cannot remember what we exactly did. We saw some local sightseeing. We certainly climbed some hills because my adoptive father, Peter, hated, sorry, loved making us go on long walks. And on the Saturday night, there was a wedding reception at the hotel. They moved to hotels tonight, but I stayed put. I was invited to the wedding reception by the landlord of the hotel and I didn't know anyone. I didn't know the bride, I didn't know the groom and I certainly didn't know any guests. I was a very shy person but I still went along, totally out of character. I had a few beers with a bit of Dutch courage and at 10 o'clock I started talking to Mark. Mark was 18, the same age as me, and lived ran about 10 miles from the hotel. He was a show jumper and in the summer he did pony trekking for the tourists. He was attractive, funny and thin and he had floppy hair. He was with eight friends and at half past 12 the music stopped. His friends had disappeared and I can't remember much about his friends I'll be honest. And it was, I was all alone with Mark. It was just like the movies. <laughs> I invited him back to my room. And we talked about our lives, our sexuality, etc. And we had found a lot in common. And one thing led to another. And... He wasn't a virgin, I was, and he showed me a wonderful introduction to gay sex. We only had two hours sleep that night, and I won't go into the full details of what we did, but I was woke up with a great big smile on my face. I was no longer a virgin, and very happy. I drove him back home, and then I returned to Brentwood the same day with my doctor parents. 
I wrote in my diary about the events. I had Mark's mum's telephone number where he lived in the winter with her and also his summer telephone number for when he did the pony trekking. It was a big mistake writing about such an experience because Peter, my doctor father, read it. First thing he did was phone Mark up and told him never to contact me again and threatened to tell his mother about his homosexuality. The age of consent was 21. He then confronted me and gave me an ultimatum. I had, if I wanted to be gay or continue to see Mark, I must leave the house. Or if I did not see Mark, then I could stay in the house. I never saw I never saw saw Mark again. I was weak, no self confidence, and now very depressed. I wanted to commit suicide as well, and that's the story of how I lost my virginity. Chapter 7 Caroline, my first girlfriend. I still dreamed about Mark, and Peter dreamed my sex life, and I didn't have anyone, any sex life anymore. I had no gay friends, only heterosexual friends, and although I worked in London, I hadn't gone to a gay pub. The gay pubs were in the suburbs or in the west end of London, I worked in the city of London which is to the east. Peter dominated my life, my adopted pet father, and in May 1986, I was changing from my one office block to another with customs and excise. A girl called Caroline phoned me up. She invited me to lunch, and we had lunch. Then we went started seeing each other in the evenings, then weekends, and one thing led to another, and we started going out to eat with each other. She was funny, attractive, we had a lot in common, and okay, I yes, I still dream to go sex, but I was enjoying it. The relationship and also I was 100% faithful to her. She lived in Barkingside in East London. Her parents were friendly as well and we had sex and I was no longer a heterosexual virgin. Peter hated Caroline. From July until September I had three accidents in his car. He blamed Caroline for the accidents, even though she was never in the car at the time of the accidents. In the first accident, I burst into a lamppost. I caused £150 worth of damage to his car. My fault. In the second accident, a car reversed into his even though I was sound in the hall, trying to warn the other guy. Not my fault. It caused £300 worth of damage. In the third accident, I went through a green light. The car going that way, in the opposite direction, went through a red light, crashed into his car. His car was a write-off, i.e. beyond repair. I was unhurt and the other car kept going. It was two o'clock in the morning. I was breathalyzed, it came back negative, and we never found the other driver. Peter's car was an eight-year-old Ford Mondeo, i.e. not worth anything. Nothing to write home about. It was an old banger. 
In October, he gave me an ultimatum. If I wanted to continue seeing Caroline, I must leave the house. If I stopped seeing Caroline, I could stay living there. I told him to fuck off and lick my ass, and I left the house and went to live with Caroline and her parents. There's no pleasing some people. Don't forget, the year before, he gave me the same ultimatum over Mark. I again stayed faithful to Caroline, although I was still dreaming more and more of having gay sex. So I knew, to be fair with Caroline, that I had to end the relationship. In January or February that year, I told her, and she was very unsettling, along with her parents, and I moved into a room in a shared house, and we stayed in contact with each other for about a year before we lost contact. We left on friendly terms, and I do not know what's happened to her. I did not see Shirley and Peter for another nine years. Chapter 8 The Afterword Lucy came home from Hot School in 1986. She was a much stronger person and stood up for herself more than me. She went on hairdressing calls and she had many friends. Peter did not like her. Her friends. In April 1987, he told her to get out of his house. She was just 17 years old. When I got kicked out a couple months before, I was 20. She went to live in a squat in Chelmsford where I went to school. I told Lucy I was gay and she has always accepted it and she too hadn't seen, did not see Shirley and Peter for another nine years. We didn't see our Auntie Heather, mainly because she, after my grandma died, she started a relationship with a guy called Sonny. Sonny was a fat, opinionated, male chauvinist pig and my auntie Heather, for her, it was her first boyfriend. She died in, nine, in 2008. We went to her funeral. We did not see Edna or Ron either, mainly because of the distance to get to Frinton on Sea. My uncle Ron died in 1994. But Peter did not tell us to three weeks later, after his was cremated. So we couldn't go to the cremation. In the next part of this life story, I'll tell you about the period of my life from when I was 20 through to 32, which is 1987 through to 1999. I hope you found this video interesting and give it a thumbs up stay lit and thanks for watching hello I forgot to say what follows is some photos from my life enjoy